In June 2023, rock star Rod Stewart listed his longtime and extra special Beverly Park mansion for a whopping $70 million. Located in the hills above Hollywood in one of the most exclusive communities in the city, Rod's estate was custom built in the 1990s, and the main house spans 28,500 square feet of space, while there's a guest house with 4,500 square feet. Aside from the stunning grounds and gardens, there are two full-size gyms, a luxurious a swimming pool, a home theater, and much more. But Rod is adamant that he won't change the $70 million price tag. He explained, basically, I don't want to sell it and the kids don't want me to sell it either. There's too many fond memories. I've lived in LA since 1975 and I adore the place. Also claiming he won't take a penny under what he's asked for. Throughout one of the most storied careers in pop music history, British singer-songwriter Rod Stewart has sold more than 120 million albums worldwide, officially making him one of the best-selling musical artists ever. But guess what? He's still willing to get his hands dirty to this day. This is the state of the road here where I live in, uh, in Harlow. And it's been like this place years not bad for a kid who left school at the age of 15 only to wind up becoming a gravedigger. And sure, back then Rod might have had higher ambitions of becoming a professional football player, but I'm confident he's more than happy with how things turned out. After releasing his first solo album in 1969, Stewart's 1971 album Every Picture Tells a Story would catapult him to superstardom. In a career that spanned over four decades, Rod Stewart has earned himself a net worth of $300 million, and he dropped a huge chunk of that on his real estate portfolio. For example, in 1986, Rod bought a breathtaking country estate in England for just over a million dollars. A handful of years later, he'd spend some more for a mansion located in the gated community of Beverly Hills. Not content with the home on only the west coast of the United States, Stewart picked himself up an Oceanside house in Palm Beach, Florida in 1995 as well. As for Rod's most recent purchase, an 18th century castle that's located on 50 acres of land. Let's kick things off with the stunning mansion Rod is listed in Los Angeles, more specifically in the exclusive gated enclave of North Beverly Park. With a price tag of $70 million, this estate is likely worth the money considering how epic it is, as well as because of how much thought and work Stewart put into it. The estate was custom built for the singer in the late 1990s by renowned mega mansion architect Richard Landry. The spread consists of a 28,500 square foot main house, a 4,500 square foot guest house, as well as three acres of landscaped grounds. Rod's English country style home has a total of 13 bedrooms and 19 bathrooms between between the two homes. From the moment you pass through the gates and the long private driveway, you're transported to a charming European countryside. The grand motor court boasts beautiful fountains, while the three-level mansion has double doors and a spacious foyer. Here, there's a double staircase and soaring ceilings greeting you upon entering the home. With a complex variety of moldings, walls, wood panels, tapestries, and classically patterned marble floors, Rod Stewart's pad is about as unique unique as they come. When he was redesigning the space with professional interior designers, Rod wanted three strong threads to tie the home together. First, a palette of golden neutrals, sort of like the idea of candlelight at night. He also wanted the lighting to be absolutely perfect, and by that I mean he wanted the lighting to be set so low that determining something like age would be almost impossible. So, each one of Rod's lights comes with five presets at a touch of a button, including the the options of candlelight and dusk. Soon after moving in, Rod would begin to turn this residence into his collector space with special art and pieces all over. The collection that Rod is most proud of is his pre-Raphaelite paintings, which he believes is one of the largest in all the world. About a third of his collection is hung on the entrance hall stairway, which includes paintings of women on one side and couples on the other. Hosting large parties or intimate soirees was made easy in Rod's dream home with its wood inlay floors and a hand painted bar that includes French doors leading out to covered loggia. The airy gourmet kitchen was designed to leave room for catering core, casual dining, and in true English fashion, Rod has two sitting rooms to either side, one for tea, 
while another is a den with a fireplace. There is a wine room as well near the formal dining space, which is room for 20 guests, while a formal library in Rod's mansion boasts floor-to-ceiling wood bookshelves and a marble fireplace. Furthermore, the library leads into a designer speakeasy room with dramatic Breche de Vendôme marble and wood floors. And near here, there's also an oversized home movie theater with access to the outdoors. The stunning double staircase at the front of the home leads upstairs to Rod's master suite, which has a spa style bathroom and massive walk-in closets. It also has a large private covered terrace that overlooks the majestic backyard and views of the city and canyons. Outside, those amenities, they continue. There's plenty of private alfresco sitting areas as well as a 30 foot tall cascading waterfall fountain to truly set the ambiance. Two full size gyms can also be found on the property, including an indoor rec room, tennis court, and soccer field. Lounge areas surround the swimming pool and jetted spa, while a built in barbecue near an outdoor fireplace gives a good reason to dine outside under the stars. When speaking with Architectural Digest about the work they put into the home since it was purchased in the early 90s, Rod's designer told them, Rod wanted the house to feel like an English country estate. To us, that meant creating the home of a well-traveled individual who has amassed a collection of very fine antiques, art, and decorative arts over a lifetime. Now, why don't we take a look at Rod's other North American home, this one located on the opposite coast. About four years after laying down eight figures to buy his home in California, Rod would drop $7.2 million on an oceanfront property located in Palm Beach, Florida. And this is one of the residences where he's said to spend a large chunk of his time living at. Worth an estimated $20 million today, Rod doesn't plan on selling this home anytime soon. And much like his California paradise, he's furnished this home head to toe in some beautiful decor. To begin with, huge white art doors provide an entrance and exit to the many rooms of the main residence, not to mention those grand outdoor spaces. So let's start there first. The exterior is painted in desert yellow and includes a gigantic wraparound patio, where Rod has been known to choreograph his stage dancing from time to time. Moving on to the inside, the home is full of a bunch of stately rooms that fit right into Rod's lifestyle. Like the dedicated piano room, which is decorated with a ton of greenery, as well as a classic white piano that sits in front of a nearly wall-sized mirror. Finally, in 2013, Rod also bought himself this estate for $6.2 million, located in Essex, back in the UK. This palatial estate includes six bedrooms, five baths, and an unforgettable view of the countryside. It would take Rod about three years of work before he was ready to move into this house, and not all of it would go according to plan. To begin with, Rod installed a football pitch into his new home and based the design off his favorite team, the Celtic Football Club. Now his custom made pitch includes a team flag behind both goals as well as a 3G turf five sided field surrounded by fence. Throughout the rest of the grounds, Rod has installed a rose garden, croquet lawn, an ornamental pond, and several guest cottages. About a year after finally moving into the property, Rod had plans to install a large pool house that was meant to be around 65 feet in length. Unfortunately, that size was deemed too big, so he had to settle for a simple 50 foot pool instead. Rod made up for it by also installing a bar, spa and dining area inside the same pool house. Then in 2020, Rod had further ideas to install double glazing windows into his 18th century estate, but city planners would tell him that idea was a no-go, as it would affect the historical significance of the property. As for the inside of his home, since it's Rod's primary residence, the looks have come few and far between. However, Rod's wife Penny has occasionally posted images from inside the family home. For example, this look at their plush living room, full of regal looking and ornate armchairs chairs and Rod's trademarked gilded picture frames. Even their bedroom is full to the brim with majesty. Like look at this quilted headboard with silk curtain combo. The kitchen is opulent too with cupboards painted a sophisticated shame of cream alongside classy marble floors and a marble worktop. Finally, the steward home office is comparable to a formal library with grand wooden bookcases and plenty of antique books. 
For now, that's going to bring today's house tour to a close. After checking out Rod Stewart's impressive real estate, what did you think? Before we head out, answer this question for me. Would you ever want a home that spanned almost 30,000 square feet? Why or why not? Let me know down in the comments because personally, that would be a little too huge for me. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!